live direct it's me i'm here and um this is my facebook live broadcast and i've got questions good questions great questions not like the usual ones really good questions this week and um if you have any questions um and more importantly if you can hear me um assuming everything's working then please ask the questions and we will talk about your questions uh, directly. So um, I'm going to kick it off, if that's OK. Uh, well, I know you, you're wondering what's going on. Well, I'll tell you what's going on. That's what's going on. It's a live Q&A with me, JJ Steyano, consultant plastic surgeon. And when does it happen? I'll tell you when it happens. Every Tuesday at 7 o'clock is when it happens. And your role is to comment and share. So please comment and share to um, to, to spread the word, spread the good word. So, if you've got a question, ask away. I've got some ones that have been asked already. Uh, it's a good one. Removal implants, do I need a capsule to me? A um, lot of people, hoping the audio is okay. Um, assuming the audio is okay. A um, lot of people, ask about capsulectomy but if they're having removal implants. The big question if you're having removal implants, um, if you're considering capsulectomy, is whether you're having implants put back in again. That's the big question. So if you're not having implants put back in again, you don't necessarily need to have a capsulectomy. Now, um, if you've got very hard calcified capsules and it's sort of really hard, you can feel them, which is pretty rare to get that, that bad, but if they are that bad, um, then um, if they are that bad, oh god, that's coming out big. <laughs> I expect that's coming out big. Is the audio working okay? I, I suppose I could have said that, couldn't I? I'm just going to assume it is. That long. Did this once for 20 minutes, and then someone put a comment saying. There's no audio. 20 minutes. Not doing that again. Or maybe I am doing it that again. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is me doing that again. Maybe I said I'd never do that again, but here I am. Anyway, um, we'll assume it's working. I'm assuming it's working. I'm going to push on. Oh, Elaine said, What's that? What's that? Does that mean it's working? Is that a clap? Is this the same when removing for you? Oh, so you can hear me then. Right. Hello. Right. So Helen can hear me. Right. Okay. Now you're jumping the gun there, Helen. Jumping the gun. So, uh, right. Elaine can hear me. Good. Um, so the first thing when you're thinking about capsulectomy and uh, removal of implants is whether you're going to put this guy, fabulous surgeon, Anika Meek Thompson. Okay. Anika Meek Thompson is a fabulous surgeon, this guy. Um, the first thing you've got to think about with a um, oh, waving hands, is that what it is? I mean, thank you. Is are you going to put the implants back in again? So that's good talking about what you're talking about, Helen, there. Is it when you so I'll talk about your question, Helen. But if so the first so if you're not replacing the implants, then I would say you don't need a capsulectomy unless the capsule's really hard, which is rare for it to be sort of um, hard. It can be really hard and calcified. But usually when the implant's out, it's it's not so hard. The, the, you can do a capsulectomy. The problem with doing a capsulectomy is the first problem is if you're removing implants and not replacing them, you're obvious. I've just done it about 10 minutes, well, an hour ago I was doing that. Um, if you're removing implants and not replacing them, by definition, the, you've presumably not got much breast tissue because you had implants at some point. And if you remove the capsule, you're going to always remove a bit of breast tissue. Try not to. But you all, you know, you always aim, you always lose a little bit of volume by removing the capsule, and so um, you don't have to remove the capsule if you're not replacing the implants. And I would say you wouldn't, wouldn't need to have your capsule removed if you're not removing the implants. Now, if you are, if you're not replacing the implants, if you are replacing the implants, that's different kettle of fish. So um, then you worry about obviously the problem with implants is capsule formation, which is the scar tissue around the implant. 
And if there's already scar tissue there, you've got to think, oh, should I do something to that capsule? So if it's a hard capsule, particularly if you're having the implant removed because of the hard, because they've gone hard, because of the capsule, then you would do something to the implant, uh, do something to the capsule. So that would be capsulectomy. And uh, Helen obviously clued up here using terms like full capsulectomy. So full capsulectomy, taking it all out. Um, sometimes it can be hard to take some of the capsule out, especially on the back wall, if it's stuck to the ribs. So some people will leave the back wall of the capsule, um, which would be a subtotal or partial capsulectomy. Um, um, but yeah, if it's a hard capsule, then part of the surgery would be removing that capsule. Now the problem with removing the capsule is it causes scar tissue, it's quite traumatic, it's quite a big op doing a capsulectomy, it's quite traumatic. And so more scar tissue comes when you remove the capsule. And so um, if it's not very um, hard, the capsule, you might not do a full capsulectomy. You might just do a partial capsulectomy. As I say, you might just remove the front wall of the capsule or just be part of the capsule. Or you might do what's called a capsulotomy, which is just basically is scoring the capsule to accommodate the new implant, particularly if it's a bigger implant and the capsule is soft. Now, if you're having polyurethane implants, when removing polyurethane implants for smooth, would a full capsulectomy be needed? Okay, it's an unusual way to go, going polyurethane to smooth. Well, I suppose maybe not these days because people are worried about ALCL. I guess I'm, I'm maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into it. That's why you're having it done, but that might be one reason why you're having it done. It would often be the other way around. Certainly if you're going from a silicone implant to a polyurethane implant, you would do a cap total capsulectomy because you want that polyurethane implant to become integrated with the tissues. Um, and um, and so you would want to do a full capsulectomy, so this sort of raw tissue for the, the new implant to be uh, integrated. If you're going polyurethane to smooth, which is what you are doing, Helen, um, then it would depend on the capsule, really, depend on how often polyurethane implants haven't got a hard capsule. And if you haven't got a hard capsule, it's actually more difficult to take the capsule out because... Um, if it's very thin, it's very difficult to, dis to di differentiate it from the breast tissue. So it's actually more difficult to take a soft capsule out than a hard capsule out. So if you haven't got much of a capsule, then you probably would leave it. Often what happens after a while with polyurethane implants, polyurethane implants are uh, smooth um, silicone implants with a polyurethane foam coating. And so um, often the polyurethane foam coating becomes disassociated and it's just the smooth implant that comes out. Um, but it, as I said, if you have got a car hard capsule, you might um you might remove it but you might not so answering your question specifically helen a full capsulectomy might not be needed if you're going to cut polyurethane to smooth you might just need a partial or you might need um if you're going bigger you might need a capsulotomy to make the capsule accommodate the smooth implant but if you're going smaller you might need a capsulography where we close down part of the capsule um those are the options Elaine can hear me and is waving my hand. Anika Meek Thompson, this guy, fabulous surgeon. Yes, it's worth it, says Joyce. It's amazing you take the time to speak to people in your own time. Thanks, Joyce. Yeah, I think why well, is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I enjoy it, Joyce. I enjoy asking questions. I think I'm trying to make the the um, the uh, sort of reputation of, I think most plastic surgeons are good people and I uh, do try and help people. And um, it's got a bit of a reputation, isn't it, plastic surgeons? Um, to, you know, buck the trend. So uh, this is a good one, but thanks, Joyce. So it's kind of you to say that. Um, here we go. Treat on a breast lift. So I am booked in for a breast lift, but two surgeons have said they won't put implants in to give me more shape because of how my boobs are already. If I send you the picture, I sent one surgeon. Would you give your opinion on breast implants, please? My breasts are really saggy after three children and six stone weight loss. I'll send picture now. What I ideally wanted was a lift with small implants to give shape. I'm so worried with just a lift, I'll end up with no boobs. Also, completely odd sizes. This patient has sent the pictures, and I have got facility to show the pictures, but I don't, I don't, I don't think she said it's okay for me to show them. So I better not. Well, not or not, I better not. Um, I won't. I simply won't show them. But anyway, I'll answer in principle this question. So um, I've seen the pictures. Thank you for the pictures. And I've also responded to you. I don't know if you're here, but if you are, then hello. But if you're not, I have uh, done it on the email, but uh, on the, the messenger thing. But um, so I understand why two surgeons have said they won't put implants. 
to give you more shape because of how your boobs already are. I understand that because when your when your breasts are sitting low, when you if you put implants in, implants just make your breasts bigger. That's what they're really good at doing, making your breasts bigger. They're not very good at the shape. And your problem is shape is a problem. Your breasts are sitting low. So you need a lift. Now, um, not everybody needs a lift. Some people can have implants to sort of take up that slack skin and give some volume. Um, but you need a lift. Your breasts are sitting low. That you, If you had implants, I agree with those surgeons. If you had implants, you'd have implants here. Your breasts were sitting low. It wouldn't look good. You'd have an elongated breast, and it wouldn't be a good look. And I, and I think they're right not to do implants. So you need a lift, number one. That is a given. Anything else is, a, is, um, is sort of optional, if you like. So you've got a bit of an asymmetry. So one's bigger than the other. So the simplest thing to do would be to do a lift of both breasts and to do a small reduction of the bigger breast. So they're both the same size. You even out the sizes. You make the shape better. Now, the problem that is the size. Because you said here, you're worried they're going to be very small. Um, I'm worried with just a lift, I'll end up with no boobs. Now, you won't end up with no boobs, but you'll end up with the size of your smaller breast. So if you're not happy with the size of your smaller breast, then you can combine a lift with implants. And that would be an option for you. I always say to people, be careful about doing a lift with implants because it has got a high complication rate. A lift tightens the skin. Implants make the skin tighter again. If you get any wound healing problems, if you get any infection, the implant will need to be removed. So it has got a high complication rate and there's very good surgeons out there who will not do a lift with implants and will stage it. So we'll do one operation first, so in your case the lift, and then at the second stage do the implants. I do do it in one operation, but I do, uh, and so does one of, not everybody here does, but Kuram Khan does. Um, uh, but um, I always say to people it's got a high complication rate. And if you're borderline, I'd say there's an, a good option would be to do the lift, small reduction of the bigger breast, lift, see how you feel with the volume, it'll be better on bigger, big, uh, sitting in a better position on your chest. And you might be happy with the volume, you might not want to have implants. But if you weren't happy with the volume, you could always have implants as a second stage. I think that'd be a very reasonable way to go for you. But if you think, look, I'm really not going to be happy with the size, then it is a lift and implants. I hope that is it's a bit funny answering that question without showing you the photos, but maybe it's okay because maybe I shouldn't be showing that sort of photo on Facebook. I'll probably actually that's a point. That is a point. I'll get in trouble on Facebook again. I've been down that route. Don't want to go down there again. Um, so yeah, I hope that that's helpful. So the, the, the lift is a definite, easiest thing, reduction of the bigger breast, then you're, at, then you're both the same size, but you'd be the size of the smaller breast. If you want to be bigger, then you could have a lift with implants, but it's a big deal. So what we've got here, Emma, a bit unrelated, but I have an, I have an uplift and 500cc high profile Movita, Movita, that's not right, Movita. But you can get the sesame Movita, I like the sesame ones. Bit of butter, a um, bit of Movita, yeah. Um, is it Motiva? I think it's Motiva, isn't it? Anyway, um, sorry, a bit unrelated. I have an ample 500cc high profile Motiva, we'll call it. Silk Surface Plus. Woohoo! Silk Surface Plus. You didn't go Silk Surface. You went Silk Surface Plus. You pushed the boat out. Woo! Silk Surface Plus implants three months ago. I wanted under muscle, but I got them over instead. Why would my surgeon not put it under? As I never got a really answer. From them so wondering reasons why oh. Oh, sorry for being glib earlier on in the comment uh, ended a bit dark that one um, well Emma are oh, you know what where, 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 that's right I saw a patient the other day you know um, who had had two surgeries and was very unhappy not by others, you know, by other surgeons, hasten to add. Um, but I think a lot of the unhappiness was coming from the communication. Because, you know, often the surgery is not that bad, you know, it's sort of not, certainly not in line with the unhappiness. And I think if you're not really looked after properly, that's one of the things I keep on getting on about here. You've got to look after people. You've got to feel looked after, you know. We all get average results, you know. Some hopefully they're all fantastic, but they're not, you know, you're going to get, but you've got to look after people. And uh, to that, that's, I think, well, going back to Joyce, you know, that's the problem. I think uh, there are bad, there is bad practice out there. So anyway, um, well, Emma, I can only talk to in, in general terms about why you put them over or under. Um, 
it's a bit bad that if you you say you want it under um, and you, you surgeons just put put it over that's a bit bad without sort of um, uh, making it clear to you I mean I pretty much never leave things open when I have surgery I, I just um, I just have a plan and we may agree on the plan and I do that you know I, gone are the days I say oh, I'll see what that one looks like and I might put it over or under see what it looks like in there I just I just do whatever we've agreed on before but broadly speaking there are good things about putting them over and there are good things about putting them under so don't be too um, upset because they might be a, a good reason for putting them over it's unfortunate they did surgeon didn't tell you but the reason for putting them over the muscle is it's the easier surgery doesn't bleed as much the surgery um, the, sur the, the surgeon the uh, implants are sitting with the breast which is good it doesn't hurt as much um, the recovery is quicker um, and so there are a lot of good things about putting them on top of the muscle um, when you put them under the muscle it hurts more it bleeds more the recovery is slower sometimes they can be wide sometimes they can sit high when you put them under the muscle they can, the muscle can hold them up high so there are bad sometimes you get animation deformities when you're exercising your breast moves when you put them under the muscle so there are bad things about putting them under the muscle so you might say why would you put them under the muscle there must be something good well there is something good i'm glad you asked me that uh, the good thing is that if you put them on top of the muscle and you have them all oh, emma's back in only thing he said i had a lot of breast tissue um yeah if you put them on top of the muscle um, then you might be able to see or feel the edges of them so that is why people go under the muscle because it gives you more cover over them so it's you're less likely to see or feel the edges if you put them under the muscle so that's a good thing about putting them under the muscle um, so that is um, that is the main reason for putting them under the muscle so why did you want them under the muscle Emma is it you're worried about being a, a so if you haven't got rippling if you can't see them they haven't got rippling can't feel the edge then it's probably okay that they're on top of the muscle i would have thought um what is it not but that, they should have talked to you really um so he said i had a lot of breast tissue so if you got a lot of breast tissue then mind you 500 is pretty big isn't it it's an uplift and, and then, yeah i mean some uh, you know what the other thing i'd say emma is that everyone's different and people have different views on stuff um how do I send pics? Um, well, Emma, I'm worried about getting in trouble on Facebook, I'll be honest with you. Um, but if you want me to personally answer your question, you do it, people do it on Messenger. They go on Messenger and uh, they, they, they um, do it that way. But um, so, you, so you can do that if you want, or you can email me info at stoneoplasticsurgery.co.uk. I'll give you a, <laughs> if you, I'll give you a, <laughs> an idea about that. And um, and yeah, that's how you send pics. So um, sagging a bit before they are sat at twenty-one to nineteen centimeters now. Oh, you've been measuring them. Oh, matron, you've been measuring them. I'm t assuming you're talking about from the sternal notch, are you? From twenty-one to nineteen centimeters. Uh, twenty-one to nineteen centimeters are my. <laughs> you're all over Facebook. Yeah, but Emma, I've got banned. I've got banned from showing pictures in Facebook. I've got to cover the nipples. I don't know if I can do a nipple cover lip coverage procedure. Um, but anyway, you can email, you can Facebook me them, them and I'll, I'll give you an, uh, uh, my view, uh, if you want my view. Uh, but well, yeah, 21 to 19 centimeters is a good nipple to sternal notch distance, Emma. So that sounds like the lift has done a good job there. So if they if they were sagging before and now your nipple to sternal notch is twenty one to nineteen that sounds pretty pretty good be happy with that. Um, so Emma, you're famous. Um, yes. So um, good. Good. That is good. That is good. That is good. Right. What we got here? We have got a question here which says, "Is LA safer than GA?" Question mark. That is. Hmm, how do you answer that? What do you want? Do you want the long answer or the short answer? So the short oh, no, the long no, the short answer is yes. In general terms, LA is safe than LA. Well, LA, by the way, is local anesthetic and GA is general anesthetic. So local anesthetic means you get an injection uh, in the place where you're doing the surgery. So stuff like a mole, a cyst, an earlobe, a nose, um, 
you know, something localized thing, you would inject the anesthetic in the bit, bit of dent, like the dentist, basically. You inject the anesthetic in the bit, and then you have the, you're, you're totally awake, boom, boom. Uh, walk out the door as soon as you've had it done, that's it, happy days. General anesthetic means you get put to sleep, you're out. It's a general anesthetic, you have to go to the hospital for that, you have to be starved beforehand, you feel a bit groggy afterwards. The When, when you're comparing local and GA, I'm assuming you're talking about local and sedation. So normally when we do bigger case, so a mole or a cyst or an earlobe or a small procedure on an adult would pretty much always be done under local anesthetic and I don't think it would be right to do it under general anesthetic. Some people say, oh, can't you put me to sleep? It's just not worth it. It's not worth the cost of it. It's not worth the risks of it. It's not worth the hassle of it. You've got to be in hospital. You know, you can usually go home the same day, but it's quite a big deal having a general anesthetic. So for a small op, a local anesthetic is the way to go. This question, I think, is probably aimed more at the people who are having bigger ops, things like breast enlargement, um, breast lifts, um, well, to be honest, anything really. You can have mastopexies, tummy tucks, facelifts. You can have all sorts of things under local with sedation. Um, so it's not the same as local anesthetic. You're not totally awake as you are with a, with a normal local anesthetic. You're sedated, so you're asleep. Um, but the recovery is quicker and in, it is safer than a general anesthetic. Now, I will, I will um, what's the word? Uh, sort of put a rider on that sort of thing. Um, anyway, uh, I will um, put a rider on that um, by saying um, that it depends on the case. So some cases, you you know, like a tummy tuck with muscle repair, submuscular breast augmentation, you can do these things under local insulation, but it might be a bit uncomfortable. Liposuction can be a bit uncomfortable. They can be all done under local insulation. It might be a bit un uncomfortable, um, so you might be better off with a general anesthetic because we don't want to make you um, sort of traumatized by the procedure. So it really does depend on the patient, to be honest with you. And if the patient is engaged, really unhappy about having a general anesthetic and really wants to have a local anesthetic, then these patients are often the good candidates for local. And certainly a breast enlargement on top of the muscles like that, you know, can be quite relatively easily done in the general anesthetic. We do them with an, with an anesthetist, done under local station. We do it with an anesthetist. We do it in the hospital where they can do a general anesthetic, so we can always convert to a general anesthetic if needs be, but it's often um, doable. And if someone's uh, uh, engaged and wants to, to have it, then it is a good thing to do. If you're not engaged and want to have it, then um, it's, it's, it's probably just as well to have a general anesthetic because um, because it's um, the risks are very small. So although the risks are less with a general anesthetic, the less are, the risks are very small. So live, we have got Emma's photos coming through. Sorry, Emma, the um, the um, automated messages said, "Do you want a brochure?" But anyway, you can have a brochure if you want. Um, right, Emma. That looks good to me. I think looks good. You, the fact you're sending the photos, I'm assuming means. I mean, there's a bit of an asymmetry, but you know, there often is a bit of an asymmetry. Are you? Um, are you okay? It's coming, is it? Are you okay with it? I mean, um, I think that looks. Yeah. Yeah, so nice, nice result. Um, I think it's a good result, Emma. Really good result. Um, I'm not sure if you're. And I know he said he was going to put it under the muscle and put it over, but I, I'm not sure if you are. Are you unhappy with it? Um, looks good. I'm going to reply now. This book's cute. I'm saying I've got to reply to my messages. Looks great. Um, so, but if you're not happy, let me know and I'll maybe comment on something if there's something you're not happy with. But um, yeah, I'd be happy with that. Um, um, why? This is a good question, this one. Oh, God, I've had to think about this, you know. I don't want to be too specific. That, that, the, the question was specifically why, why is it cheaper to have it in Poland? That was the question. 
but I don't want to um, specifically um, uh, target Poland because um, that, that was a person asked me. Um, but let's just say overseas. Why is it so much cheaper to have it overseas? Well, in some places, why, you know, why is it cheaper to have it in some places? Um, so it is um, because when I answered that question to the person who answered it, or at least the people, the, 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 someone asked and I asked. Anyway, okay, I'm not going to get too I'm overcomplicate it. I was saying, well, you shouldn't go abroad aftercare. You need to think about your aftercare because you have to go back if you have an infection or you've got to make sure you see the surgeon for your post-ops. And all these reasons why you shouldn't go abroad for surgery um, or travel far away for surgery. And I say that to people who want to come here from abroad. I say it both ways. But that's not really answering the question, why is it cheaper? So oh, that's interesting. No, you're right. I haven't asked that question, have I? I've just said why you shouldn't go to Poland or thing. Because the fact of the matter is, there are good surgeons in Poland and there are good surgeons in Prague and Cuba and I don't know where else you could go abroad for surgery. There are good surgeons all over the place. Um, so why is it cheaper? Now, the easy answer is I don't know why Poland, Cuba, Prague, and all those sorts of things. But the sort of things you've got to think about are the indemnity insurance. We pay a lot of indemnity insurance as plastic surgeons in this country. Uh, we also have um, in CQC, the Care Quality Commission, have certain standards for the facilities where we do surgery and we have to have very high standards um, of our facilities, of infection control, on of safety, making sure you're safe and, uh, and you're looked after properly. Um, and all those things do cost money. Um, and I think the cost of living is, is cheaper in some countries. Um, so it might be an element of that. But um, I don't exactly, and I think also if you, the, the training is different. So you've got to see whether it's a fully trained plastic surgeon or not. And um, basically I think people charge what, you know, uh, what they can. And uh, you've got to sort of, Think why things are cheaper, but I think it's I don't know exactly. I'm asked that really. I don't know why I'm thinking about that phrases. Um, but yeah, I think maybe all those things. The indemnity insurance, um, the clinic. Uh, well, that that. Let me put it this way. That's why it's so expensive here. They might the Polish people might come on and say, "Oh my God, you, how can you say that? We all have indemnity insurance, and we all you know we have to have indemnity up to ten million. I think it is for indemnity insurance." So, um, you know, they might say, oh, we have it all as well. So in which case, I don't know why it's cheaper. Um, so don't complain. Just tell us why then, if they're going to do that. But they might not do that. But, um, yeah. But the, the bottom line is I would think about going far away or to Poland or to other countries for surgery just because of the aftercare and uh, what have you. Um, is more difficult. I'm not saying it's worse. It's more difficult. You've got to make sure you can see someone in this country. So... Um, here we go. Emma's back in. Thank you. I would have liked them higher. I'm worried they will sag faster. My biggest problem is one side of my tummy tuck. Okay. Um, right. Um, I would say to you, Emma, that the problem with breasts is really the breast sagging rather than the uh, implant sagging. So I don't think the breasts are going to sag any more or less with them underneath the muscle. Um, I don't think the muscle is going to help you. Oh, yeah. I see where you Yeah, That angle shows the tummy tuck. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much a bit about them sagging in the future in terms of putting them under or over the muscle. And the muscle can often keep the uh, uh, implants high, but um, but you don't want the implants high if the breast is low. You want the implants to sit with the breasts, and I think they are sitting with your breasts. And it's often that people say um, that they like they'd like them higher, but you know it's hard to get them get them higher. I think the position of your nipples is good. I think the shape of your breast is good. You've got to remember, when you look at these photos, they're all out of a bra, you know? So um, I think you've got a good result there, um, Emma. And I don't know if you could have had them higher, really. I think that's good. They were probably higher to start with. I'm sure they always are. So they settled nice. And I can see you've got a bit of a fullness on one side of your tummy tuck, um, which, you know, a little, little bit of a bulge. But I think um, that, that could be done with a, with a, um, um, with a, with a, you know, could cut a sort of a bulge slash dog ear. So that could be revised, I guess, if, you know, yeah. So um, people at home, oh, they can see the tummy, can they? Do you want them to see? <laughs> right, let's go. Um, right. 
what um so emma yes that's where i am on that here well great question coming up guys oh you're, you're gonna like this one this is please tell us about seroma capsules and how long do they take to form info on the internet says seroma is usually absorb in time but can encapsulate how soon would you know if one had encapsulated paints really really good question um that is a good question which i'm very happy about so i'm trying to get okay. um so So, um, no, yes, look at that, look at that, guys, whoa, whoops, yep, and that, that's how it's done, people, that is how it is done, right, so I think it's that bulge there, um, is that bowls there, I guess you're talking about there, Emma. Um, look at that. So, um, wow, how good was that? Huh? Give me a thumbs up. Is it? Is it, is it okay. Uh, okay. Well, I was happy about that. Anyway, um, okay, back to the Seroma question. How long does Seroma? So, um, so, yes. So, seromas are not that common. Um, seromas are not that common, but um, they can occur. And what was the question? Sorry, I'm just so happy about that. But um, I'm, I'm more, right, how long do they take to form? Capsule. Yeah, it's, uh, if, number one, seromas are not that common. Well, certain operations they are, like for instance, latissimus dorsi flaps, like you know, breast reconstruction where you take a flap from the back. Um, but the um, so seromas are not that common, and encapsulated seromas are even uh, uh, like even less common because like not all, hardly any uh, seromas encapsulate. So I wouldn't be worried too much about your seroma encapsulating because you're absolutely right. Most seromas will absorb. When you get a seroma, you don't want to keep on draining it too much because you can get infection if you keep on sticking a needle in too much. So if it's not too bad. Bit of compression and a bit of time they will resorb um it's a really good question what you're asking which is how soon would you know if you would got one encapsulated it it's a chronic seroma it's a neglected seroma so it takes time i i, I can't give you the time i know you want a time scale a scale but i'm gonna say months i don't really know but it's going to take several months of sort of neglecting a seroma really um but if the if you're on it and if it's sort of growing and really big and you drain it, but if it's not really big, you can leave it. And we said that it does take weeks to to get better. So you know you're on the cusp of hold on a minute. You said months, weeks. Months, when does it get, get encapsulated? I wouldn't too would be too worried about encapsulation. You know, I, it's not really a common problem an encapsulated seroma. Um, but it's a really good question, and I think I would imagine it would be a few months. I haven't I've seen people with them, but they've usually come having had surgery elsewhere with you know neglected seromas which have become encapsulated and then it becomes difficult because then you have to sort of cut them out and things like that. But um yeah. So um that's <coughs> that's a good question there. Um that's a good question right there. If you want to know what a good question is, people, that's it. Oh well, hold on a minute. We've got the light moment lol. That's me, lol. Um, didn't hear anything about the tummy tuck. Oh, did, don't tell me the sound. Did the sound go when I did the picture? Did the sound? Does the sound go when I do the picture? Can I just? Does the sound go now? Add sound. Oh, oh, the sound. Is the sound on now? I think the sound. Right. Um, Right, sorry. 
I'm, I'm new to using the split screen technology. Anyway. On the side. Can you see my can you see my arrow? Can you see my arrow? No, probably not. No, okay. Anyway, you've got to be a bulge on your left side there, and that could be revised with um excising. And um yeah. I guess that could be revised. But that is very exciting that we'll have to show you a photo, to be honest with you. Um so uh where are we at? Emma. No, I lost I no, I lost connection. Oh. So it was you. Okay. So I just said it again. Yeah, the bit of a bulge. Does Kurum do rhinoplasty? You bet, D. You bet Kurum does rhinoplasty. You better believe it. Yes. See what I said. He does. He does do rhinoplasty. So um, what are we up to now? Uh, we're on to the questions. And we have got, now this is, team, I'm going to give you a fair warn here. This is last question. Fair warning. Oh, I should have done a crawl crawler. Can I do a crawler? Okay, it's the last question, guys. So if you've got any questions, please do ask away. Ask away. So here we go. Is it possible to have multi sides that are directly sent along the spine? I have a question for the Facebook Live tomorrow, which is now. Uh, is it possible? Oh, okay, I just said that. Is it possible to have a design? I have a raised mole about one centimeter in diameter directly over my spine in the center slash lower area of my back, and would be curious to know if excision was possible due to location. And if not, are there any other options for removal? Good question. So, basically speaking, the answer is yes. The one centimeter mole over your spine, absolutely fine. It doesn't matter where your mole is, pretty much. Um, here we go, I'm probably going to get caught out now, but pretty much anywhere on the body, we as plastic surgeons can take it off. We, we as plastic surgeons, what do you, what the specialty of plastic surgery, well, there's different subspecialties within it, but basically it's taking big bits of skin away and reconstructing the defect. So we can take big bits of skin away from all over the place and reconstruct the defect. So we can do it, especially if it's a mole. The, the limitations in terms of taking bits out, uh, being over the spine is fine, it doesn't matter at all. But the, the limitation, I say it doesn't matter at all, the limitation to in taking things out too, is the size and the location. A bit like when I talk about tattoo removal, same for moles, if you have a very, you know, very big mole in a place where the skin is tight. So for instance, over the spine, it's fine that it's over the spine, that's no problem at all. The only problem with it being over the sp spine is that if you move, if you move, then it, um, can be uncomfortable and it can put the wound under tension. So that would make us be a bit more wary about taking certainly a big lesion, a centimeter, it's not that big, in a place which moves like the spine, like the hands, like the wrists, um, you know, anywhere which is sort of moving around the air, but anywhere that's moving, you'll be a bit more careful about it. Um, but we can take moles out of any, any sort of any part of the body. Um, that would be absolutely no problem at all. And uh, certainly having on off the, um, off the spine would be fine, but as I say, it might be a little bit uncomfortable, um, but it's, uh, it's certainly doable. But as I say, as plastic surgeons, we can take them off pretty much anywhere. Um, we've got one coming in on Facebook Live, I mean, on Facebook Messenger. Hi, I had a, wow, I had a replacement 275 high profile polyurethane implants with a lift 24th of November 2017. That's uh, over a year ago, isn't it? My original implants were 15 years old. 295 high profile Nagar implants done by Paul Levick at Priory. I had tuberous breasts, so wanted to help improve them when I was 19. I have to say, Mrs. Captain, awful to deal with. I've nothing but problems. Never in my life had a health problem. Never been a smoker and drink every month or so on a night out. My breast went necrotic and got wider and wider. I went back into surgery after a holiday over Christmas, eight weeks post op for debridement. My doctor said it was a four by two sluffy wound and the implant would need to be removed you know there's an infection but four weeks post op the priory did the swab which came back clear eight weeks post op my doctor did a swab um worst ever time of my life 
implant is pain. My wound was getting worse. I attached some picks. After all was healed, she kept the implant in and had to restitch my other breasts. She said, she told me that it is it. I've been left with the breast with a flat appearance underneath. I complained to my Okay, she said she'll redo my breast, but will only use polyurethane. But all my trust is gone, and I'm literally terrified. I also don't want polyurethane. Whoa, okay. Well, this is a um, so this is a, um, a question from someone. Oh, hi, Mia. Um, so, oh, look, stuff's been going on in this. Oh, god, stuff's been going on. I've missed it. Uh, I've inboxed you also for your advice. Okay, wasn't sure. We, Mia's asked Ellen. Right. Oh my lord. Right. Okay. So um, this is a patient who has had a uh, had high profile polyurethane implants. Had them in for fifteen years. Sorry. No. No. Sorry. Had high profile Nagel implants in for fifteen years. Had them replaced with two seventy five. Uh, so about the same size, high-profile polyurethane implants with a lift. Okay, and has had problems. And this is why people don't do a lift with implants, because um, it, it, this can happen. Um, when you do a lift, you make everything tight. When you put implants in, you make everything tight again, so the risk the wounds can break down. And this is what's happened. The wound has broken down, uh, and it uh, looks really nasty, and I'm really sorry that you had these problems. Uh, and this is the problem with doing a lift with implants. This is why many very good, very well-respected surgeons don't do it. They will stage it because of these sorts of problems. Um, and uh, it's, and now you're saying, so it's over a year ago, now you're saying it's all healed. Um, you've left with a breast, which is flat appearance. Um, you know what? The problem is when you've had problems, you, I know you want to get them fixed, but sometimes it's like, ooh, you've got problems. You've been through a lot. Whenever you do revision surgery, you can't guarantee you're going to get problems again. You know, it's the worst thing in the world when you get a complication. It is awful. And if someone gets an infection, gets a wound, breakdown, what have you, you will do everything you can to fix it. But when you fix it, when you take that person back to theatre and say, I'm going to fix this problem, you have to get them to sign a consent form which say you can get infected again and it can all break down again and it could all go, you know, the same thing could happen again. Hopefully it wouldn't. Hopefully it won't like strike twice, but it could. You can't guarantee it won't. And so this is why we're a bit wary and like, you know, I'm like, oh, if it's uh, the, the flat appearance and the shape's not right, well, you've been through a lot and you've lost skin there because the skin's, some of the skin's died. Half of me is thinking, I know you don't, you may be not happy with it and you want it to be better, but I'd be thinking, would you not be better off just quitting while you're where you are? You may not be happy where you are, but goodness knows, if you have more surgery, you could make things worse. So um, that's my bit. I think I would worry about it being worse. I think if it's all healed now, I think you realize why you, you've heard sounds like you've had a really bad time there. But that's why people shy away from lifts with implants because you can get bad problems with them. I'm, I'm sorry to say, um, when you get a complication, sometimes, like someone else was saying about, um, there was this, this week about having a revision and surgeons don't want to take on complications because they are more difficult. They are, by and large, more difficult operations. And you're usually best going with your original surgeon. I understand sometimes it can be break down the communication, but your original surgeon's got a vested interest to try and get things right. And sometimes they're not being evasive by saying they won't do anything. They're like trying to do the best for you. Sometimes the best option is not to have surgery, although patients often, often don't see it that way and say, well, I want to have this done or that done, or surely you can just put new implants in, or surely you can make things better. And you're like, well, I can, but I can't guarantee I'll make things better. I could always run the risk of making things worse. So does that help? That's where I am. Thank you, Mia. Um, Mia, the reason I asked, because I wasn't sure of the depth between the skin and the vertebrae. Sounds stupid, ha ha, but I was curious. Definitely read to hear that it's possible. Is it something I'll be considering in the future? No, it's a totally reasonable question, Mia, because the vertebrae obviously is right there because you can see it, can't you? You can see your spine, you can see the bones. Um, but they, but basically the mole is in the skin. And so it, is, it doesn't go skin bone. There are layers in between of connective tissues between the skin and the bone, although the bone is very close. So yes, you, you know, you don't really want to be seeing bone when you do the surgery. But having said that, you know, and for a mole, you wouldn't be. But having said that, if you're doing surgery when you do have to go down to bone, you can go down to bone and then stitch up the skin over the top of it. 
you know that that's like you know, on the scalp or something you know you can take things down to bone but you wouldn't be taking it down to bone uh, even though your mole is right over your vertebrae you would be leaving some healthy granulate um not granulation healthy connected tissue in between the the vertebrae and, and the skin so it's it's a good question Rianne, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and i realize why you asked the question because uh, the bones are right there but worry not it will be fine kesha why is cheaper uh, have surgery in turkey kesha it's a bit like the um what was the other place i was talking about poland um i don't know kesha i think the indemnity is probably maybe less with the surgeons maybe you have to look at their training and who they are you look at the, the clinic what the um standards in the clinic are uh, look at the aftercare because if they're not you know you've got to look at the aftercare packages because they've got to give a well i haven't got to but you know it's good to look after people and to say you have any problems we'll fix it sort of thing so if they don't do that then that might be a reason why it's cheaper if they don't fix their problems because if you um you know you can incorporate that into the cost often you know fixing problems and looking after people for follow-up with consultations and things um but uh, but uh, the main problem for me Keshia, is that the Traveling is a problem, you know, unless you live in Turkey. If you live in Turkey, fine. But if you travel, then it's a problem. Traveling, there's all sorts of reasons. Uh, and you want to know why? They're all in my book. Why you shouldn't have surgery abroad. Um, but, yeah. I'm oh, worn out. I don't know about you. I am worn out. I tell you that, we've, been, we've had a meld of um, Facebook messages coming in live. Photo showing. I mean, this is a new, you know, we've got a new dimension here with the photo showing. You know what else I can do is I can actually uh, have people on. Remember, I accidentally did it once. And oh god, I've got questions I missed. Oh god, sorry, Emma. I see you asked me a question. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I can do that. So bear that in mind, people. Emma, I did. I, I'm going back now. And Jay, Jada, I see. Oh god. And Lelaine, oh dear, cracking up. No, I, no, not that one. Who would you recommend for facelift and neck lifts? Uh, I would recommend Emma, a fully trained plastic surgeon. Uh, so look for FRCS Plast, look for someone who is or has been an NHS consultant. Kuram Khan does it here. So we have a surgeon here who does facelifts and neck lifts. Uh, obviously, I'd recommend him because I work with him. But um, also, you know, there's lots of good plastic surgeons. Ring your local private hospital. I don't know if you're based in Birmingham, but wherever you're based, there'll be a private hospital nearby. Spire, BMI, one of those. Ring them and um, see who uh, they, they, they've got there and meet them, see if you get on with them, you know, uh, get a rapport, make sure they look after you, that sort of thing. But, uh, yeah. So, Jada, Jada, Jada Kins. Good name, Jada, by the way. I really want to remove my armpit fat slash bra fat. Would a vasal lipo be okay to do this? I also have breast implants. Would that be a problem? Yes and no, Jada. Yes, vasal okay, would be okay to do it. And no, breast implants would not be a problem. Yep. So the armpit fat slash bra fat, and the thing I always tell people about that is, first of all, when your bra strap is there, there's always a bit of a bulge. Everyone's got a bit of a bulge there. So um, that's number one. So it's got to be something there when you take your bra off. You know, is there still a sort of bulge there when you take your bra off? Because if there's not a bulge there when you take your bra off, and there is one when you put one on, if you take the bulge out when you've got your bra on, if you take that off, when you take your bra off, there'll be a dent. Does that make sense? I don't know if you can rewind and go over that. <laughs> you know, so you've got to have a, if you've got a bulge there when your bra's not on, then fine. But a lot of people say, oh, I've got this when I put my bra on. Well, everyone has that, you know, because the, especially if the dark bra's tight, especially the backs, maybe if the back size is too small. So maybe, you know, look at, fitting bra fitting first but certainly um vasal liposuction would be an option for that normal liposuction would be an option for that think about any types of liposuction it doesn't remove the skin so if you've got a lot of skin there if you've got something that's called accessory breast tissue which some people have which is a big sort of bulge of fat here in this bit here um uh, like a like a well it doesn't really look like a breast but it's called accessory breast tissue um and, and it doesn't remove skin now vasa does report to to give a degree of skin retraction so that would be good but the other option sometimes if there's a big bulge is to actually cut the skin out, but then doesn't give you a scar. So we try and hide the scar in your armpit, but it depends on where the bulge is. If the bulge is here, then, you know, those are questions you might have to have. But in general terms, Giada, to answer your question, yes, razor would be a good option, and breast implants are not a problem at all. Um, 
Don't do laser here, by the way. PD by um, Elaine Davies, can I have a heads up on recovery times following lipo to flanks and hips? If you're just having lipo, Elaine, um, you are a bit bad. About, like, don't be uh, don't be underestimate lipo. Don't be underestimate. Don't underestimate lipo. It is a bit you know traumatic. The scarring is tiny, tiny little stab incisions, little water through dressings, so you can wash and shower straight away. Dissolvable sutures, no real problems with the wounds, but um, but the although the scars can be a bit red to start off with, but you are quite bruised and swollen, so I wouldn't underestimate it. It depends on exactly how much lipo you're having, but you know, flanks and hips, it might be a bit uncomfortable, you might be a bit sore, a bit bruised and swollen, you might want a few days off work, depending on what you do, if you're sedentary in your work, maybe just a few days will be okay. Uh, but uh, you will feel bruised, swollen. Um, bruising will be there for a good week or so, and sometimes the bruising tracks down your legs, even to areas where you haven't had liposuction. And the swelling can last a few months, so it'll be a while before you can see what your final result is, because you can get swelling for a while. Sometimes it's good to wear tight things like, you know, um, cycling shorts, things like that, to help with the swelling. Um, but it can take a few months for your final result to come. I'm not saying your, re your recovery will be a few months, um, you know, maybe a week, give or take, for for, for work and maybe a few weeks for the gym, but um, it can take a while for everything to settle down. Sometimes people have it done and they say, oh, you haven't done anything. You, look, I've still got all the problems I had before, but that's often because it's swelling. And you feel like, I promise you, I have taken out some fat. Look, here's, here's a fat in the, you know, in the jar, um, but you replace the fat from with them with swelling, and that swelling can take a while to go down. Uh, Mia Kisha, would you recommend? Elaine, see you Friday. All right. So, Elaine, you could have asked me Friday, but there you go. Well, I'm not going to tell you when you asked me Friday because I tell you, I've told you already. God, I just got to remember what I said then. Keep my, keep my story consistent. Um, good. See you Friday and see you all this time next week for another installment, another thrilling installment of Facebook Live because that is the end of the, uh, well, certainly the end of my questions. I do hope I haven't missed any questions anywhere, um, anywhere down the line. Um, and thank you all for your questions. And uh, Emma, I'm sorry you're unhappy with the result, but it's pretty good, I would say. Helen, I'm sorry that you're unhappy with everything, uh, but I would think about um, when to, um, you know, not to put yourself through more. Um, Emma, lovely, lovely to speak to you too, and thank you very much for participating. It's this evening. Whew. I'm gonna check out now. I am going to end the broadcast. Thank you, um, and see you next week. Bye.